You need to have a heart for that person. Number one, you need to love them and care more about them than you do for yourself. And then see their potential and to be able to, first of all, you said it, Matt, you want to call out that potential. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is what I know you you have the, the capability and the possibility and of, of doing. I'm just going to start talking fast because this guitar intro takes forever, right? So yeah. welcome everybody to the True Wealth Radio Show. I'm your host, Dave Littlejohn, in studio today with extra guests. So I've got first... Matt Dixon, as usual. So Matt's here, but also we have a, a special guest, great friend of mine, another advisor who's visiting town. Wes Holt. And we are... Stoked to have you, Wes, and this, the greatest Tuesday you've had all week. So welcome to the True Wealth Show, everybody. Uh, I, I've been wanting to do this now for several years. Uh, first, let me let me set the table for everybody listening. Um, I'm trying to think back. We've known each other, Wes, for probably what, about, is it? I think 2010 or 2011 I was the first gonna, time we met. I was going to say it's it has to have been somewhere in that Longer than 10, but maybe not quite 15 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we met at, of all places, so you'd think we both live in Oregon. Where do, so where do we meet? In another town that starts with an O. Right. Omaha, Omaha Nebraska. Nebraska. I think, <laughs> how do you meet somebody in Omaha from Oregon? Well, we were both at a coaching program together. Mm -hmm. And... I think you're going to find there's a little bit of a theme underpinning what we're going to talk about today. Well, I think that's what um, drew me to David is a lot of it is because uh, he is a constant learner. He's someone that's always trying to improve his trade, not only as a business owner, but also as a person. And that's the kind of person I am. That's the kind of person Matt is. And so we love we love to learn and grow because that excites us because it makes us better. And we're, when we are better, we can help others become better as well. That's true. And so it's, it's kind of fun because it's, uh, it's really a cultural undertone to everything that we do. Uh, and, and I say we because Wes and I, when we initially met, uh, we were both in financial services. And I guess you were, uh, because I've actually been in the industry longer than you. Correct. You were you were transitioning from a different career field. You'd been doing some retail stuff, as I recall. Yeah. So we, my wife and I had a couple of retail businesses, and uh, you know I've been blessed in one respect. Is my mom taught me one thing. She taught me how to save. So thank you, mother. <laughs> uh, I don't know if she's listening, but thanks, mom. And that was her gift to me. My dad was super generous and gregarious. And so he taught me how to give. So thank you, dad. That makes a difference in the lives of others. And so those are the basis where we started. And so Paul and I, my wife, we were involved in business. And so I've been saving and investing since, well, I've been saving since I was 10 and investing since I was 19. And uh, so we, we worked through this business transition. And uh, my next step is, you know, I've got some problems. I've got capital gains. I've got some tax issues. Good ones, by the way. And uh, so if you're paying a lot of taxes, that means you've got good problems. Uh, but I also wanted to make sure that I didn't pay any more than necessary. And I needed some advice in, in the whole picture of my financial life. And uh, so that is the, the, the nemesis or the basis for where I started. And so what I did was I interviewed with seven different financial firms and said, okay, who do I need to go to? And what I discovered is some, there's some really nice people. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of them, they all wanted my money, but I needed help not only just or wanted advice, not only that, but, you know, what about my tax situation? What about my legacy? What about my trust? And, and how does that work? And then uh, specifically these capital gains that I was going to deal with. And so I was in angst a little bit talking to my wife one night and, and she said, you need to do this. And I'm like, what? She said, you need to be a financial advisor. And I'm like, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't like to sell stuff. And her comment to me was this. She said, yes, but you're really good at helping people solve problems. And she said, if you help them solve problems, you will do just fine. And so that is how I got into the financial industry. And I wanted to make sure that I was in a situation where I was well-rounded. And that's what uh, when I was talking to David in Omaha, 
it wasn't just about the investment piece. It was really about relationship. It was about the taxes. It was about, you know, how do we do trust planning and all those other aspects that affect our financial picture. And uh, so we felt like there was a, um, I would use the word kindred spirit. There was an alignment there in what we did, how we approached uh, people, how we wanted to make sure that we had their best interest in mind. And uh, so that's kind of how we met. And that's the backstory to, to our connection. Yeah. And here's the fun part. Uh, I'm terrible at sales. Right. It's sort of the same thing. And uh, we joke about this, right? Because I think Matt secretly likes selling stuff, yeah, I do. right? That's his passion of mine. I can <laughs> sell ice tea. <laughs> yeah, he's like, <laughs> like, I can sell ice too. Uh, you know, no, we get it. Yeah. Um, so, the, but, but for me, it was less about the sale than the solve. Right. And, mm -hmm. and so uh, I do, I love the education part. I love with our client base. Uh, oftentimes there's, there, we have kind of a joke about, Hey, you know, do you want to know what time it is? Do you want to know how the watch is made? Or do you want to see like the diagrammed blueprints of how we built this watch? Right. And, uh, it, it's how, how deep into the weeds do you want to go in the understanding of what we're going to do? But I love teaching about this stuff. So, uh, you know, there have been a lot of times throughout the community where I've had opportunities to, speak to kids in school and, and I've talked to various service groups and so forth and always trying to lay a better uh, educational foundation because I think that's the uh, solid educational foundation is, is sort of the base for how you start to develop financial success in our country, right? In a capitalist system, you, you need to have knowledge of how that system functions so that you can navigate within it. And so uh, it was, I guess, it's been probably five or six years ago now that uh, Wes and I started angling toward working together and that's continued to this day. We're still, uh, Wes is part of our team um, and you know, you have a kind of your core group of folks that you work with. And then of course uh, you've got the rest of the, the team that's backing up uh, other elements there. We just spent the whole day actually kind of deconstructing our own in-house investment protocols. So we needed Wes in town. I said, well, since I got you here, we got this radio thing, right? Well, and part of that is, is going back to our constant desire to learn and grow. Uh, here's what we know that um, anytime we start something new, I don't care if it's the first time you're trying to save. I don't care if it's the first time you're trying to ride a bike. Uh, I don't care what it is. Every time we start something new, we really suck, right? But, <laughs> it's a technical term. <laughs> but, you know, I look at my grandson and it's like he's flying down the road on his scooter and he wipes out. Well, that was an education, right? And it was a True. great education. I didn't tell him what a terrible uh, scooter rider he was. I'm like, good job, buddy. Way to go. Good job. Let's get up and do it a little different this time. Right. So when we're getting together like we did with, yeah. uh, with the team, what we're doing is we're saying, look, we want to get better. What's working? You know, what, what's going well? And what are we working on? I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what I want to do today, since I've got you here, Wes, and I know Matt and I have talked through this a little bit as well, is we oftentimes, you know, our, our listeners, we, we have a whole spectrum of people that listen to this program, right? I, I know some of our clients actually listen to the program, right? So, hi, guys. Uh, I also know that we have a bunch of folks that may find themselves someday being clients. And then we have a bunch of you that will never probably be a client. All of these groups are fantastic. You do not need to be our client to benefit from what we're going to talk about today. The, the subject, which at a high level is, okay, first, how do you go about getting better at things, right? And we're going to talk a little bit about our experiences and how we do that. And we're going to talk a little bit, I mean, obviously, Wes and I met at a coaching environment, Mm -hmm. Right, Matt, you and I, we met a long time ago, but you probably don't even remember this. The first time I ever met you, do you know what my role was? Uh, no, I don't. I was coaching you. Are you serious? Yeah, it was you were learning to play basketball and we were working on post moves when you were still shorter than me back then. I don't remember this. You had to have been, <laughs> I mean, you were quite young. You, yeah. you maybe were 10, 11 years old. Okay. So you were very young, but that's when I initially met you. I just moved to town. Wait, was this up in Sutherland at a gym? Up in, no, in this was, I think, at your home in the driveway oh, at your own hoop, you okay. know? Okay. Yeah, I really don't remember. It this. was back in the day. Okay. But what's the common theme here that we have? 
everybody is seeking coaching to mm -hmm. develop more expertise. True. Okay. Now it's interesting because what does it take to be a coach? Knowledge. Right? Yeah. You have to have been there before. I think knowledge is part of it. I think there's more to it than that. Right? I think there's more to being a coach than just having knowledge. Being able to communicate is a big one. I, like, think, I think that's part of it. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of things. Enough things that uh, I have a crazy idea. For, for many of you out there that are thinking to yourselves, where are they going with this? Look, y you may need to figure out, do I need a coach in my life for something? And if I do, how can I spot a decent coach versus a coach that's maybe not a coach at all, right? Because I'll mm -hmm. tell you, there's a lot of salesmen and coaches clothing out there, for one. True. Um, and then there's a lot of people that have competence, but they may not be a good coach, right? So we want to have a, a conversation about how might you find a good coach and what might a good coach be able to start bringing out for you. But before we do that, we have to take an evil, no, I'm kidding, a sincere profit break for this program. So stick around, all right? Um, we'll be right back. I'm Dave Littlejohn. I'm Matt Dixon. And Wes Holt. And you got True Wealth. On News Radio 939 FM and 1240 KQEN. Hey, welcome back to the True Wealth Radio Show. I'm your host, Dave Littlejohn. Joining me in studio today, Matt Dixon and Wes Holt. And reminder if you are just getting onto the program right now, you can grab this as a podcast, right? And that's not an excuse to bail right now, okay? You got to stick around and listen. We got some great stuff today. We're talking about uh, getting smarter right? Getting coached up. So we're going to be talking more about that uh, and, and what that means just in multiple areas of your life, not just finance here. But uh, if you want to catch the podcast, or for that matter, if you want to see the YouTube rebroadcast of this thing, then go to our website at littlejohnfs.com and you can grab all the goodies there. So you know the story on that stuff. Get subscribed and tell a friend. All right, back to what we're talking about today. Uh, we're talking about how does one uh, like what are the characteristics of a good coach, right? And so Matt, you threw a few out right at the break, right? One yeah. of them was what? Good communication, yep. some knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I coached sports for quite a few years and one of the biggest pieces I think in that aspect that I learned is you got to make people believe that they're capable, right? Like if you say, hey, you know, you're not going to be able to win this race, they're going to probably run slower because they don't think they have a chance to win. Mm-hmm. There, there has to be this mindset there that you're capable of succeeding at what you're doing and instilling that as a coach. I think that's a really big piece is making you know sure that people believe that what you're shooting for is possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I agree. And I, I sum this up really simply too. All of those things come with there's some care and compassion as a coach. There's encouragement mm -hmm. as a coach, right? But it it's not necessarily encouragement the same way for everybody. Right, A good coach is discerning because what they really ought to be doing is looking at the needs of the person being coached. It's true. And some people, they need to be pushed. Well, and it, can, right? it can work the other way too. And, you know, I talked about you got to make sure that people believe that they can win and succeed. Sometimes people come in a little too hot and they're, you got to reel them back a little bit too and say, hey, I know you really want this, but pause for a moment. Maybe you haven't considered... If you do sprints all day mm -hmm. long, every single day, you're going to blow a hamstring or you're going to work yourself too hard and you're not going to be prepared for the race. So sometimes you got to reel people back in too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's that discernment and it's, here's the beauty of coaching that it offers an outside perspective. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. And I think that outside perspective is critical. Wes, I know we have talked about this before, right? Uh, the question of how hard does one push themselves, for example, right? I, I use this all the time, by the way. How hard do you push versus how hard do you pull? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think both are right. Some coaches, like th there's the idea of do you berate somebody into performing or do you encourage them to try harder? All right. That's the classic definition of well, do you want me to be your cheerleader? Yay, go get them. You can do it. Right. Or do you want me to be the drill sergeant? Right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, come on, get up, get up. Let's get going. Come on. Yeah, put some dirt on it. Let's go. Yeah, right. So that's part of the encouragement. And I think as a coach, you need to have a heart for that person 
Number one, you need to love them and care more about them than you do for yourself. And then see their potential and to be able to, first of all, you said it, Matt, you want to call out that potential. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is what I know you you have the, the capability and the possibility and of, of doing. And then uh, so you want then you want to call them up. Here, come here. And this is what you can do. So we're calling out. Uh, I was telling the boys a little bit earlier about I've got a personal trainer that comes to my house three times a week. And I'm like, I've been lifting weights since I was in high school. I started in eighth grade, actually seventh grade. Uh, I remember specifically my teacher. I was a little scrawny little kid. And he goes, Holt, you want to get tough? You need to get in the gym. So that in like, didn't know what to do. I just like showed up and then we just kind of winged it. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a trainer coming to my house and you go, well, I should already know how to lift weights. I mean, I'm almost 60 years old and it's like, I've been lifting since I was almost 12 and a half. So, but here's what I know about myself. I know that unless someone's pushing me, I do not maximize my potential. You know, interesting that you brought that up. Another piece of that I think is, I was watching this video, um, some Olympic trap shooters, right? The best of the best. They, some of these guys have two coaches, not just one. And these guys are watching for the smallest, mm -hmm. smallest error. And, you know, they miss one bird out of a hundred. Well, why did you miss that one time? And these guys are there to spot that one tiny, tiny mistake. And so it can be something as simple as, you need a coach, maybe not because you need to push harder, but just because you need someone there to help you, you know, m avoid the mistakes, those mm -hmm. really, really small mistakes. Mm -hmm. Well, I like that too, because uh, even I was sharing a little bit earlier in the day that um, I was in a financial uh, questioning place about three years ago. And I was in this angst in my, in my heart and my spirit. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I just don't know what to do. And I'm, you know, I'm talking to my wife and she's like, what is your problem? <laughs> I have a, I have a <laughs> wife that's very clear and has the gift of guidance, just so you know. Uh, what is your problem? She said, you help people do this all day long in your office. What is your problem? And I'm like, baby, here's the difference. The difference is this. I am not emotionally attached to their financial decisions. So therefore, I can think logically. I said, in this case, I am emotionally uh, connected to this decision and I cannot think logically. And so having that, so I, I made a phone call, right? I made, in fact, I made a couple of phone calls. I'm like, look, I need your perspective on this. I'm emotionally involved here. What do you see that I don't see? And the blessing of having that unemotional outside opinion of someone who cares about me more than themselves was that was my coach for the day. And I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. hundred percent. Uh, it's uh, a, a funny example, right? We've talked about this on this program before uh, the idea of why you need to train for certain things, mm -hmm. because sometimes uh, when you are in a danger situation, or an emotionally compromised situation, right? The, I, I say this often, right? Uh, when you find yourself in a fight, flight, or freeze scenario, okay, you are no longer using the logic center of your brain. You are operating using the emotional shortcuts. And what emotional shortcuts do is they sacrifice accuracy for speed. Mm. Okay? And it's the same reason that we don't allow surgeons to operate on their families right? Because you're emotionally compromised and that's going to make it more difficult to make good decisions with objectivity, which is required in those periods, right? You need to have that training. So unless you're driving, we all can do this exercise and it's really simple, right? Take your hand and hold it up and then put it right on the tip of your nose, okay? And then tell me if you can focus on that. And then what you do is you start to pull that hand away and at some point it will come into focus. Now, any of you old enough, you've done this with a menu too, right? You have to get it far enough away that you can start to see it in focus. And that's really how, what coaching is good for is they can hold something that's right in front of your nose that's not in focus because it's you're too close to it. But they have, they have a different perspective. All you have to do is turn your hand around. It could still be touching your nose, but they can tell you what's right there because they have a different vantage point than you do. And if you're old enough, you not only need to move the hand further away, but you need to turn on your iPhone light so you can see the reading on the wall. Right. And now <laughs> the iPhone, the new phones, they've got that magnifier feature even Sweet. better. <laughs>
<laughs> Great example. Yeah. So anyhow, all of this to suggest, and, and uh, you know, I'm just going to kind of disclose on this one too, right? Everybody listening here, you get it. All three of us in this studio today, we're financial advisors by profession, right? So one of the things we do is we offer advice to our clients. We are we receive compensation for this. You could even look at this and say, well, wait a second, are you just trying to sell us on coaching? Well, if I was trying to sell you exclusively on us, then perhaps. What I'm trying to do is help you discern whether or not you need a coach, right? There are areas that you have expertise, okay? And you really are capable and competent to do all these things. You don't have to hire somebody else to cut your lawn. You know how to do that. You're an expert at that, unless you want to, right? If you if you don't if you have the resources and you don't want to put your bandwidth into mowing the lawn, and you would rather somebody else do it for you, then you can make that trade and put your time elsewhere in your life. Yep. And that is totally okay, right? But we're what we're talking about now. I mean, we've we've talked about getting into the the fine tuning and precision of athletics. Right, you talk about trap shooting, Matt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, Wes, you've talked about being too close to decisions. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I think we oftentimes think about coaching from an athletic perspective, but how do you go about getting coaching in areas that are, like say, professional? Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot too. I'll tell you an area that I go to for help all the time, and I still know how to do it. What's that? Taxes. Taxes. Ah, I guessed it. Right. <laughs> and and so here's the question. Wait a second. Dave, you're a CFP, right? I thought tax was one of the specialties within the, the yeah, CFP. Yeah, and I'm like, really. and it is, right? There's, mm -hmm. It's one of the categorical specialties. It's like you, under, you have to learn a lot about tax, right? Why would I still you're use the, a third party? You're the CEO of a company. You don't have time. That is the number one reason, mm -hmm. right? Now, here's what's interesting. Am I involved with my CPA? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I am. Mm -hmm. In fact, I drive a lot of the tax strategy and discussion. I bring the ideas to my you CPA. You don't want to have to curate it, do it all, file it, and lift. You don't want to have to lift the weights. You well, and there's, there's more than that that's unique to our circumstance, right? We sit as fiduciaries for other people's finances, mm -hmm. right? And while I can be a fiduciary for everybody else... I can make my own financial decisions, but how does one be objective in that circumstance, mm -hmm. right? I use a third party for independence so that an auditor can say, I, as somebody who's sophisticated with tax, am not getting fast and loose with the rules. Mm -hmm. I am still using an independent third party to make sure that we're staying within the lines of the coloring book, right? right? And so there's some value in that to me. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And guess what? Sometimes I'm so close to the numbers, I still miss some things or there's things that are beyond what I was thinking. And the extra perspective brings new ideas in and right. the brainstorm creates even more. And you might not be reading tax code at night like your CPA is. But if my CPA is reading tax code, we need to have a talk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so much of this is done in software and concepts right. now, right? But yeah. I get it. I yeah. get the joke, right? So let me, oh, thanks, Captain Buzzkill, for that one. <laughs> but hey, I was just thinking even my situation where I made the transition to financial advisor because it was like I had everybody that had a little bit of a sleeve of information, but nobody could see the big picture because they couldn't step back and see the 30,000 foot view mm -hmm. because money, in this case, taxes specifically, yes, they involved the IRS, but they also involved the estate. You know, it's mm -hmm. one thing to make money, then it's another thing to keep it and get it onto your ears. Um, there's another thing with, you know, 401ks and payroll and bookkeeping and, you know, and in my case, there was some real estate stuff. And so who's going to bring all those pieces together? Uh, and I was looking for someone like that. And I know that, you know, again, you and I are the same, same cloth when it comes to that kind of thing. But I have lots of advisors in my life, lots of coaches in my life. Mm -hmm. I look at them as my like board of directors. If I was running a company, mm -hmm. I want a good 
tax person, right? I want to, in that case, I, I want a good bookkeeper. I want someone that can run the payrolls for me. I want a financial advisor. And I have uh, someone that I deal with specifically in real estate. They're an advisor for me. My banker is an advisor for me. And uh, frankly, I got a spiritual advisor. My pastor is a pretty awesome dude because I want somebody that can see that 30,000 foot view and is not emotionally attached. And so uh, those people in my life make me better. And that's what a good coach is. They should bring out not only what you see, make it better, but also bring out what they see, which is frankly more than I can see it myself. So yeah. I, like the, I like that team around me. It makes, it makes me better. Yeah, I like that. Well, the, the, the key takeaway from all of this is you can't see your own blind spots. Right. Right. So I, I can't, I can't, I can't, for you, right? I can't see behind my head. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There are lots of areas that we can't see, but somebody with a different perspective yep. may be able to, and a great coach or mentor or teacher or whatever we want to call them. But that person in our life that if we're willing to receive the instructions, mm -hmm. right? And that's a, that's a big part of that. Are we willing to receive? Mm -hmm. But then there's some real potential for positive impact with those relationships. But look, we are uh, running a little long on the segment. Let's do this. We are going to take our next corporate profit break. Uh, which means, yeah, we're going to grab a few commercials and then we're going to come back and um, let's, let's see maybe how might one begin to locate good coaches? How do you identify them? And are you possibly a potential coach for others? That and more when we come back. Stick around. I'm Dave Littlejohn. Matt Dixon. And Wes Holt. And you got True Wealth on News Radio 93.9 FM and 1240 KQEN. All right, gang, welcome back to the True Wealth Radio Show. Uh, we are having fun today talking about uh, really a lot around the, the, the concept of coaching. And I guess this was just our own this felt like a layup of a topic because every one of us does this so much, right? I mean, I, I, I'm constantly looking for coaches uh, in, in many forms, right? In the form of mastermind groups, in the form of actual structure coaching, in the form of just reaching out to other uh, folks in, that are in, in industry positions. I love some of the lists that you just gave us, Wes. You included like your pastor, your uh, an attorney, your CPA, you've got real estate professionals. And we think to ourselves, oh, these are all just other professionals and it's a bunch of salespeople. Not if you're finding the good ones, mm. right? Not to me, but because I will tell you that when I work with professionals, I may pay them, but I get more back in value than I spend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and and if you're not, then you go find someone else. Well, yeah, it, it's an exchange of value where typically you're leveraging up. Like, guess what? If I don't have to go to law school, then I just saved a whole lot of time. Right. And and people for this, I'll tell you, if one of the things that people what's what do you think one of the most common mistakes people make when they start looking into the price of things? They don't value their own time. Mm hmm. Right, and what is one of the things coaching can help you do? Buy back some of your. You time. buy back time. Buy back time, right? You know, you get there faster, and so what a what a what a concept, right? Yeah. So one of the things that I'm always looking for when I'm looking for a coach, or when I'm looking for a partner on my board, I'm going to use it that way. Mm -hmm. Is I am saying, can they can they can they buy me time? That's the one for one of the things I'm asking. Second thing I'm asking is. Are they an expert or do they have strong expertise in their field that they're, that they're in? That's going to uh, show in referrals. I'm going to talk to my friends uh, and I'm going to talk to my friends who have, have done things well and things who have made mistakes because I can learn just as much from the mistakes as I can from the successes. And then the other thing is um, my expert or my board member should help me avoid the big mistakes. Don't do that. I've got I've got some great people on my team. The cool thing is, I, I know you do, David, and you do, Matt. We get to share those team members with our clients, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. But uh, because we have, it took me four CPAs to find the one I've got. 
right? Right. But uh, look, I'm, I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to make sure that I'm asking the right questions so that I get the right team member and then time will, uh, will begin to develop that. So the one thing, interesting thing about when you're looking for a coach is a lot of coaches, especially in any environment, they talk a different language. And can they take their language and bring it into a place where you can understand? I don't care if it's, if it's, uh, I was just talking to a client of mine today and he was dealing with a, um, with an estate attorney and he was hearing all these languages. He said, Wes, I don't get it. I'm like, well, let's, let's break it down. So I think one of the gifts that we have is I'm able to take that conversation, put it in a language that he can understand through the form of questions. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to be telling somebody, I want to be asking, what if, what about this? What did you understand? What was, what are the two things you want to accomplish with this estate plan? And what are, what are you most concerned about? And so just asking those questions was able to help him open up and just share, okay, this is really what I want to accomplish. And I'm like, well, in this case, it was uh, a friend of mine. I'll call him John. I'm like, well, well, John is of all the things you want to accomplish. Is that one thing the one thing or is there something that's a higher priority? Mm -hmm. And so he was able to, with my prodding and asking questions, being able to unfold and we're going to get him a better result because he, number one, was willing to be coachable. Uh, Matt, we were talking about the coachability. <coughs> How come some people aren't willing to be coached? They're stubborn and stuck in their ways and they don't like change. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it because he's like... They're stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's, so if you're not coachable or you don't have people around you, is it because you're like, ah, uh, you know, if I have to ask for help, you know, I maybe I suck. Well, mm -hmm. that's the word I'm using for some reason, but it's like, no, 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 no. Uh, I married a woman that is beautifully opposite than me. And it doesn't mean that I'm broken, broken and she's all that or that she's broken and I'm all that. It means she has strengths that I need to tap into. And I have strengths that I bring to the team. That is the partnership that you want when you're choosing that coach or that person for your personal board of directors. And if once, I was telling the boys earlier, took us 35 years, 35 years to figure out, oh, she can have an opinion and I can have a different opinion and it's okay because it's not right or wrong, it's just different. And thank God because we tease her because she has the gift of guidance and I have the gift of arranging because I like to orderly things. But that beautiful team makes a better result. And so I think when you're looking at that, understanding that you're not broken if you ask for help, you're actually the smart one because your ego is down. When your ego is like, I don't got no ego. I want your strength in my life. That's an amazing person that says, I want that. And then finding that someone who is who cares more about you than they care about yourself themselves, that's the beautiful relationship in the coach partnership. And a word of encouragement out there, right? You can learn this, right? That's the beauty of this is that maybe your initial response is, and, and by the way, I know this because uh, I am currently coaching. Uh, I, in fact, no, I don't go on Tuesdays because I'm here, but otherwise I would be coaching track right now right? High school track. And you get a very mixed bag and you get some folks that they kind of, you know, these young kids, they already know everything, right? Ah, I got this, I got this, I got this. And then every now and then something will happen and there'll be just this moment where we get to communicate and the wall comes down a little bit because they don't need to be so cool in front of their friends. And, and there's this moment where you see a transfer of wisdom, right? And remember, wisdom is the faster way to get experience, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You, you get wisdom from experience. But if you can just jump to the wisdom, then you don't have to touch the hot plate at the Mexican restaurant. Mm -hmm. OK, mm -hmm. you just believe them and don't get burned. OK, so the 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 beauty, though, of being able to learn to uh, accept input. Right. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. it's a lot of people. It's really easy to get defensive in a hurry because you don't want to feel like somebody's telling you you're doing something wrong. But. If you can look at this as, hey, it's not about being right or wrong. Let's just find a way to get better. And I need to be able to take all that data in and I can sort it out later. But let me not discard it before I get it. Right. So I think that's a big deal. Yeah, for sure. So, all right. 
We've got, we, we, you know, I feel like we've now officially, everybody's listening, like you're all convinced coaching is a good idea, right? Good. I'm glad we had that talk. Hey, I'm going to tell you a little marriage coach idea here. This is just for fun, but I learned this just the, uh, probably in the last couple of weeks. And I, I work with a, with a, a group of guys. There's about 10, 12 of us that hang out once, once a month. And uh, we were just sharing, uh, some marriage wisdom. And, uh, this person shared this with me. Now remember, knowledge is not power. It's the application of that knowledge that is power. So here's, here's the key. So all you married guys out there or guys that have girlfriends, here's the key. When she tells you something, you can ask one of three questions. <laughs> Honey, do you want me to hear you? Do you want me to help you? Or do you want me to hug you? That, my friends, is priceless information from a co- the three. Yeah. Do you want me to just to hear you? In other words, am I just listening? Yeah. Help. Do you want me to help you? The answer is not, honey, I want you to read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do you want me to hug you? So that is like, oh my gosh, that was gold. That was simply It gold. really is. It really is. Uh, if, if, if you take nothing away from this program, wow. take that away. Oh, and we have this one other incredible piece of wisdom that we will bring you right after this last important commercial break. So stick around, everybody. Uh, we have got... Final thoughts on coaching, and uh, we're going to see if we can't help you to find the people that you need to put around you. Stick around. We'll be right back. I'm Dave Littlejohn. And Matt Dixon. And Wes Holt. And you got True Wealth on News Radio, 93.9 FM and 1240 KQE. All right. <laughs> Welcome back to the home stretch of the True Wealth Radio Show, everybody. Uh, I'm your host, Dave Littlejohn. Joining me today, Matt Dixon. And Wes Holt. And we have been talking about coaches. Right. And I, I just want to remind everybody, and if you're just joining us, grab the podcast and you get caught up. Um, we're using coach as a pretty generic term today. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there are times when you have probably, most of us have been a coach and most of us have been coached. Okay. Uh, and the same way you've taught and you've been taught, right? You've counseled and you've been counseled, you, you, whatever you want to call it. But the question is, what is the value of good coaching and how much do you seek it out? Okay. And I want to encourage everybody listening, whether you are catching this on a YouTube uh, channel, if you're catching it through a podcast, if you're listening to it right now, okay. I want to encourage everybody to seek out coaching. Like, like we all have areas where we could be better in our lives and coaches can help you get there faster, right? So my question to uh, Wes and Matt here, how do you guys go about finding uh, mentoring or coaching resources when you're looking? Wes, I'm going to pass that one to you to start with. I'm going <laughs> to think about that one for a second. That's a loaded question. How do we go about So the question is, how do we find a coach? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I think that's the first thing is uh, understanding what, am I good at and what am I trying to learn? Um, I'll give you a fine example with my accounting. I, I, uh, started a business, no business experience, um, no mentoring experience. And, uh, the first year I get a $35,000 tax bill and my CPA at the time says, well, here you owe 35,000 bucks. And I'm like, well, how in the world can that happen? I said, uh, I'm looking at my checkbook. It's went up like 10 grand. I get that. But why do I owe $35,000 in taxes? Well, I got a great education on accounts payable Mm. and uh, and inventory. Mm. So uh, those are things that are like, oh, my gosh. So this kept happening. It kept happening. And after year three, I'm like, I am going to figure this out. I said, because what I'm not doing is I'm not asking the right questions. Uh, so when I go to interview, so what I did, I grabbed an accounting book and I'm like, I'm going to figure this out. So I started studying accounting, not because I wanted to be a tax person, but because I knew that I didn't have the right questions that I was asking. And, and then what I did is I started talking to my friends, you know, who do you use for accounting? What do you like about them? What do you wish was different? Because I want to know everybody has strengths and everybody has weaknesses. That's Okay. But that was part of my process. And then I interviewed them. And part of my interview process was, here's my taxes. What would you do differently? Mm -hmm. So I wanted them to show me. And then because what I was looking for, not only, you know, are they smart or are they brilliant, but can they communicate with me in a language that I can understand? 
that was huge because if they can bring their language skill set to me and like, oh, I get it, then I'm like, now we're now we're communication. That's the communication piece is strong. They have expertise and uh, they're looking for things. In my case, I wanted something who was somebody who was proactive, not reactive. I wanted somebody who would say, hey, let's plan ahead. Here's what's coming down the road. You might want to be aware versus going, hey, dude, yo, $30,000 worth of taxes. I'm like, great news, April 14th, right? <laughs> so that was, I want a proactive person that can speak my language, that has expertise, that I know that my friends and family and coworkers have had experience with, and that I can, that I trust them. So that's, that's my list. So after you get to that point, do you find yourself then kind of grading on the, you know, afterwards saying, Hey, am I taking anything away from this? And am I getting better personally? I think that's a big one for me is once you've got your coach, you need to be able to reflect and say, is this working? Well, and part of that, Matt is, um, I'm a constant learner. Mm -hmm. So one of my expectations when I'm dealing with a professional is I want, when we leave a conversation, I want to be more informed. I want to be smarter than when I left than when I showed up. Okay. Be because that's part of my, yeah, that's part of that's my, fair. my heartbeat is like, I want to get better and the, I don't want to do your job, but I want you to help you me with learn, that. Yeah. I want to learn because when I learn, guess what? I ask better questions. And that's so true. better that's questions true. means uh, they're going to do the work, but I'm going to be able to steer them correctly. Because if I do a terrible job of steering my coach, what I want, remember that John I talked about earlier, he didn't really know what the, what the landmine was that he's trying to avoid in his estate. We were able to unpack that a little well, bit. Well, and I so. think that's mm -hmm. one of the really good things about where we're at as a business, right? So if you look at our slogan, it's all over our website. The first thing that we talk about is educate. Mm -hmm. The second one is plan. And the third one is invest. Mm -hmm. So we take that education piece really seriously because we want the person who's sitting on the other side of the table from us to be able to speak the same language so that we can then plan, make a plan together that we both understand. Then the investing can come in. But yeah, I think you're right. That education piece is a huge one. Well, and here's the cool part. I learned something from the person that's always across the table as well. I don't mm -hmm. care what socioeconomic level they're at. I don't care what their area of expertise is. Absolutely. I know they have gold inside of them. And I want to pull that out because I want them to impart that to me. And I have become smarter because my clients have been willing to share their successes mm -hmm. and some of their losses. And that's and hopefully I'm able to reciprocate and do the same. So yeah. to me, if that, re that relationship street. is so fun. Yeah. 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 I think that the takeaway, if I was distilling everything down that I just heard is if you will go about becoming more of an expert on your own, then as you look for other experts, you're going to be able to identify them. Right. So you're, you're going to know because I know more about the subject already that I'm looking for. And so I'm as I'm asking for help, I'm going to still right. be able to learn, but I'm also going to be able to assess whether or not you're at a level beyond where I'm at mm -hmm. and that you're capable of helping me get to where you're at mm -hmm. so that I can sort of level up from there. You're saying you kind of need to be able to ask the right questions in that meeting, yeah. in that opportunity. Yeah. yeah. And, and it is, I think it's perfectly fine if there's a big knowledge gap between your, your, you and your sure, coach, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. But, but the idea is that you're trying to close that gap in real time as quickly mm -hmm. as possible. And so a great coach is going to help you close that gap faster. But the first step in coaching is to coach yourself right? Yep. Start going to work on the subject matter to develop expertise in it. And so that's the part that I think we sometimes forget is, and Wes, you said this early on, and I think you nailed it, which is you do coach yourself, mm -hmm. right? You can pick up a book and gain knowledge. Okay. So you don't have to have that person standing next to you. You can get into YouTube or, you know, go through Google, use AI now, and you can get a lot of really good information, but you need to continue to develop the strength of that uh, education, because especially with AI these days, right? I'm really cautious about that, that it can throw information at you. And if you don't know how to ask the right questions, you may get the answer to the question you asked, but it's not the question you should have asked, mm -hmm. right? Well, on the flip side too, I don't know about you, but you know, you get all this information. And my dad would say this about information. He would say, 
You can uh, lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You can send a fool to college, but you can't make him think. So information is just information. Now, how do you do application? Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but you know, we've been in little projects on a little motorhome, and I'm like, all this information, I'm like, until I get out there and put my wrench on the bolt, yep. that's when it likes, oh, that's what they were trying to show me. And if I can have someone with me in the process, number one, it's more enjoyable to have a friend doing something together, but I learn more from that application process. I think that's where the danger is. We have all the information we want, sometimes too much, as you're saying, or sometimes we ask the wrong question. I think what we should be asking ourselves is, how do I best apply information in my life? For me, it's hands-on. That's the way my box is wired. So how is your box wired? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I will tell you what, uh, I appreciate you being willing to share uh, with our listeners today. And I just want to remind everybody out there, if you're listening and you find yourself uh, looking for a coach, uh, there are lots of places to look. If it comes to the financial side of things, uh, we would love to be part of your network. I'm very encouraged that you're listening to this stuff. Keep doing that. We have tons of information that's archived. Uh, but you are also, we're, we're happy to have a discussion with you. Uh, it's not intended as a sales pitch, right? We just want to hear how what you need, see if we can't help solve problems for you. Mm -hmm. Matt, how did they reach us? Yeah, they can give us a phone call at 541-375-0898 or shoot us an email, info at littlejohnfs.com. All right. Well, you hear the music, so it's time to go. Until next time, I'm Dave Littlejohn. Matt Dixon. And Wes Holt. And you've been listening to True Wealth. Thanks for tuning in.